This lesson is a review of what we've learned so far about uh, bias and samples, the different types of samples like voluntary, convenience, simple random, stratified random, um, cluster sampling, all that kind of stuff. Also margin of error and knowing whether something is an experiment or an observational study. Um, we'll just have a little bit of everything, kind of a buffet of basic statistical knowledge. All right, so looking at problem number one, a local college is conducting a survey to help determine whether the college should renovate the athletic center or expand the computer lab. The college decides to survey every fifth student who enters the computer lab. Identify the type of sample described, then tell if your sample is biased, and explain the reasoning. Well, first of all, um, we've learned that anytime they say something about you know, every fifth student, every tenth student, anything like that, that is the method called systematic. Okay, that uh, was a systematic sample. Now the question of bias is a separate issue. Um, systematic sampling is not automatically biased, so we have to uh, read the question carefully. Um, now we're talking about a local college, all right? And the choices are between uh, renovating the athletic center or expanding the computer lab, all right? But um, our population is the entire college. Now um, this is going to be biased because um, look at where they uh, do the survey. They, uh, they pulled every fifth student, but it's every fifth student who entered the computer lab. So clearly, if we're only surveying people that use the computer lab, um, you're going to get more kids, uh, more students saying, yeah, yeah, expand the computer lab. They, they use the computer lab. We're missing all those kids who maybe are in the athletic center. Um, so that's definitely biased for that reason. So I could say systematic. This survey is biased because they are only surveying students who use the computer lab. This sample is likely to have a higher percentage of students who would prefer to re renovate the computer lab um, compared to the general population. All right, uh, what about question B? The college reports that 560 out of 1,000 people surveyed are in favor of expanding the computer lab. What is the margin of error for the survey? Okay, um, well, okay, so for as far as margin of error, um, we know that margin of error is a one over the square root of the sample size, right? So the sample size, is that 560 or 1,000? Which one of these numbers is the sample size? All right, the sample size is 1,000. All right, 1,000 people surveyed out of however many uh, uh, students are on this campus. So, but the sample size is 1,000. So, one over the square root of 1,000. And uh, let's just take a peek in the calculator for that. All right, so there's my one out of a square root of 1,000. And so I'm getting 0 0.0316. All right, but we need this um, uh, as a percent. All right, so this is going to be 3.2%. So there's my margin of error, plus or minus 3.2%. Okay, um, it said the nearest tenth. That's why I went to one decimal place. Now, give an interval that is likely to contain the exact percent of people that are in favor of renovating the athletic center. Okay, so that interval, well first I need to know the, um, the percentage of people in the survey that um, were all about uh, expanding the computer, uh, let's see, alright, well they switch it up here. Um, give an interval that's likely to contain the exact percent of people that are in favor of renovating the athletic center. So be careful because 
Here they were talking about um, in favor of expanding the uh, computer lab. So look, so if 560 people were in favor of expanding the computer lab, that means um, 440 people, all right, I'm talking about doing 560, um, sorry, 1,000 minus 560. Okay, so 440, that's the rest of the people uh, who were surveyed, because they only had two choices. So, um, so 560 people voted for a computer lab. That means 440 people voted for the athletic center. So be careful. I'm afraid if this were a quiz, a bunch of people would have just used the 560 without reading the question carefully. So anyway, so we need to find this percent, 440 out of 1,000. Um, so 440 out of 1,000, okay, well uh, that is 0.44 um, or 44%. Okay, so this is what we're starting from. Uh, right, so that's the uh, percentage of people in the sample who are in favor of uh, renovating the athletic center. So if we start from this and then do our margin of error, so plus or minus 3.2 percent. Okay, so if I do my 44 um, plus, well, you know, I'm going to do the minus first. So. Um, if I do 44 minus 3.2, um, and then if I do my 44 plus 3.2, um, that's going to give me my interval, okay? All right, so that's going to be 40.8. Okay, and then uh, 44 plus 3 is 47, so 47.2 percent. All right, so this is the interval that is likely to contain the exact percentage of uh, students who prefer renovating the athletic center. Okay, and just putting that into a sentence, that's what it means when we say interpret the interval in context, write a sentence. Okay, um, so it is likely that the exact percentage of the population in favor of renovating the athletic center is between 40.8% and 47.2%. All right, let's move on to number two. Identify the type of sample described, then tell if the sample is biased, explain your reasoning. Um, let's see, a newspaper is sponsoring a poll and wants to find out the preferences of farmers across the state. Okay, let's highlight that. All right, farmers across the state, that's our population. Um, regarding the state governor's election. Okay, so our population is farmers though. Okay, the newspaper surveys farmers in the local area to gather their data. Um, okay, first of all, all right, well this was a poorly worded question because um, we don't have enough information to know what the uh, sampling method was. We don't know how they did the survey. We don't know if they surveyed um, every 11th person on the street, or did they mail out a survey, or did they post a survey on their website? Uh, we don't know. So um, we can't answer that, but we can say that it is biased because um, the population is farmers across the state, um, but the newspaper only surveyed farmers in the local area. So that's going to make it biased because of only doing the local area. Okay, um, yeah, so this method was unknown, but um, 
the survey will be biased because they only surveyed farmers in the local area, leaving out farmers across the state, which is what our population was. Now, uh, moving on to number three, find the margin of error for a survey with a given sample size. Well, we know that the margin for error is just the square root of one over the square root of the sample size. So this would just be one over the square root of 2,400. Okay, so that's point zero two zero four. So it's nearest tenth of a percent. So this will become two point zero actually uh, percent. All right. So that's the answer number three. Similarly, this will be one over the square root of one hundred and eighty. which is 0 0.0745. All right, which translates into 7.5%. Got to round up, five or higher. Okay, so as you can see, the bigger the number is, the smaller the margin of error smaller the number is, the bigger the margin of error. All right? In other words, the more people you sample, the more accurate your estimate will be, which makes sense. Anyway, number four, find the sample size required to achieve the given margin of error. All right, if I want a margin of error of 10%, um, that means one over the square root of my sample size had to equal um, 0 0.10, that's 10%. Um, doing the reciprocal of both of these gives me square root of n is equal to 1 over 0.10. And then I need to square both sides. So this will give me n equals 0.10. All right, and I'll just square this, and uh, that's 100. So n is equal to 100. Okay, so that would have to be my sample size. Sample size of 100 is going to give me 10%. All right, I'm betting this is going to be 1,000, but let's go through the motions. All right, so once again, I know that 1 over the square root of n has to equal 0 0.01, all right? That's 1%. Um, doing the reciprocal of both of these gives me the square root of n is equal to 1 over 0 0.01. Now, squaring both sides. is going to give me n equals. So, hmm, 1 over 0 0.01 squared. Ten thousand. All right, I said too little when I was guessing before. Um, Ten thousand. All right, so we'd need a sample size of 10,000 to get down to a 1% um, margin of error. Okay, number five. Decide whether the following situation is an experiment or an observational study. Remember, it will be an experiment if uh, the person who's measuring um, uh, changes something. All right, if the scientist or the researcher or whoever is collecting the information, um, if they decide um, how the participants are treated, um, then it's an experiment. If instead they are just observing and not interfering, 
then it's an observational study. So, a teacher wants to study the effects of classroom participation on a student's final grade. The control group, okay, um, is a group of students who do not participate in class. Okay, um, the experimental group is students who do participate in class. Well, okay, uh, I'm not super comfortable with the way this question is worded, but um, they're just talking about somehow observing uh, students who are either participating in class or not participating in class. Um, so it doesn't sound like the teacher is doing anything to the students except for recording um, their grades. So this would be uh, an observational study because it's not like the teacher is um, somehow forcing some kids to participate and forcing other kids n to not participate. The kids are just doing what they do. So that is an observational study. Alright, that is the end of this lesson. I hope it was helpful to you and I will see you on the next video. Good luck on the quiz tomorrow if you have a quiz tomorrow.